Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to solve coding questions for the Accenture. We are going to pick some of the previous year questions. So without further ado, let's get started. First thing first, let's understand what are the rules that you need to follow or you need to understand before attempting the coding question is that like you will be given two questions that you have to solve within 45 minutes. So you can expect these questions like easy and medium level. Then the programming language you can select from the list or the drop down. It could be like C, C++, Java, Python. So select the one that you are more comfortable with that you have learned. And uh, in order to crack the coding round, you have to solve one question partially and one complete output is required. That means, for example, let's say one question, you have four test cases. For one, one of the question, you have to execute or clear all the four test cases and one Question the another one that we have, even if you do partial execution, that is even two test cases are passed, you will be able to clear the round. Okay. So in this video, we are going to have one question for you at the end. So do watch the video till the end in that if you answer the question correctly, the top three commenters will get free Provincia Prime access. So we'll start with the first question that we have. Let's say here, uh, there's a function that you have to write that contains three parameters. So first two are integer R and the unit and a positive integer array of size N. Okay. What this R represents, like R represents the number of rats present in an area. Then the unit is the amount of food that each rat consumes. And what is an array represents, like each element of the array, or you can call it a list if you come from the Python background, represent the amount of food present in each house of that area where the index of the array corresponds to the house number. So each array comes with its internal indexing starting from zero till the length of that array. So that index represents as a house number. So what exactly we have to do? We have to complete the function that should determine the minimum number of houses required to provide enough food for all the rats. Let's say we have n number of rats and with for each rat we need some unit of the food there are like number of houses that we have with each house we have a value for what unit of food that they have we need to find out that like first we need to figure out what is the total food required for the entire rat then how much it is available in terms of each houses that we have in a list or array format let's have a look at the input so what are the constraints that we have? Let's say we can return minus one if the array is null. Let's say we have one condition where we have taken the input where we do not have any food content for each houses Then it should return minus one. Then it should return zero if the total amount of food from all houses is not sufficient for all the rats. Then we have to, uh, there will be computed values live in the integer range that it has to be. So let's say given one example that we have and sample output, let's try to understand how we can get the answer as four. So here we have number of rats, which is are defined as seven. The unit is each rat needs like two units of food. That is we calling it as unit, which is two. Then there are going to be eight houses. So N represents number of houses. Then this array is, let's say if I create it as a block. Okay. And in that we have eight, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I think I need to add one. So here we have two, eight, three, five, seven, four, one, and two. And for the house number, we are going to use the index. It's like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Because it starts from the 0, we will have 0 to 7. Now, what we need to find is, first thing that we need to find, what is the total food required for the rats? That is, number of rats, 7, into the food required for each rat, which will be 40. So, 40 units of food that we need. And we need to find out that how many houses that we have to visit so that we will find 14 units of food. So that means there are like number of houses that we have which represents as an one index in the array. So for let's say we will iterate on each of the element that we have in the index and we will collect the food unit. 
and we will add that. And after each addition, after each compare or uh, iteration, we will compare if this value is greater than what we require as a food amount that we want. So in the first iteration, let's say if I visit the index zero and I say like food or I'll create some variable like total food or something. So it will be two. In the second iteration, I'll go here and I'll compare this like 14 is greater than two. So it won't be good. Then I will add two plus eight. It will be 10 units of food that we have. Again, you will compare with the 14. Then again, still uh, it's not good. Then we have like 14. This third house we will visit and we'll come get that. So this like we have 13. Still, it's not good enough. Like it's not sufficient. Then you will visit one more house. And that is like 13 plus 5, which we have like 18, where we will compare this value. So the required amount that we have is 14. The value that we have is 18. This is basically 18. So which is sufficient enough for the rats. Now we will go back and count how many houses that we have visited. So if we count that, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. That's what the output that we are getting. So we need to visit 4 houses to collect the food that is required for these rats to survive. Okay, this is one. And in case where if you don't find it, so we have these constraints that we have to follow. If the array is null, that means if the four units are everywhere that we have zero, zero, like even if you don't have any value, in that case, we have to return minus one. We have to return zero if the total amount of the food from all the houses. Let's say there's one condition where we have visited all the houses and still the required Food that we have is still if say greater than visiting all the houses, like the sum of all the units that we did. So in that case, we have to return zero. So this is what we have to do it. Let's convert that into a Python code and let's see how it works. All right, so here's the Python code that we have where we have written a function called calculate in that we are passing the value of our, the unit array and the n value, like how many houses that we have. Okay, so and what are the input that we are taking for the R is we are taking the enter the number of rats and then we will taking the unit that number of value of the units for each rat that is required. Then we will go with the end that how many houses that we have to visit. Post that we will create an array where we will map all the inputs that we have with respect to each house that we have. Once we do that, we are going to check the first condition if the array, if it is none or if it is zero. In that case, we will return minus one. Now let's say after that, what we are doing is we will first calculate total food required for that. So in a given example, what we have the R value is seven, we will multiply by that two and we will get here 14 as a value that we need. And the food till now is like when we iterate and we will visit each and every house and we'll find it. So initially we have defined it as zero. Then we will go with the for loop for each house in the given range, we will visit that. We will find out like food till now, we will add the value of that specific house. So houses, let's say the index value that we have at that specific index, what is the value that we will pick it, that we will add till now food and we will compare if that is greater than the required food that we have. When it is greater, then only we will, like if it is not, like in that case, we will update, we will increment one more value and one by one we'll keep adding these uh, houses. And when we get that, Based on that, we will return the number of houses that we get. Otherwise, it will return the zero. So let's feed the values that we have. So in that, we will take the reference of the same values. So let's say, let me execute this. Here the number of rats that we have is seven. Okay, here's the number of rats that we have, it's seven. Then the value of units is we have two. How many number? We have like eight. Then we need to give all these values as a space separated. Like we have two, eight, three. Let me just check. Two, eight, then three. Then we have five, seven, four, one, and the last value, which is two. Once you do that, so what is the output that we got is a four. I just do it while so you can understand. So basically here with this code, we are able to get through that. Let's say if you want to understand what is the time complexity that is required here to get this. As we see here, let's say it doesn't matter what is the number of houses that we have. We understand that 
in order to get the output or the minimum food that is required for these rats to survive, you need to visit each of the house one by one. So having n number of houses, the time complexity that you are going to have is B O of n. Is there any optimal solution to do that? No. Uh, even if you find any alternate method, in order to get it, you have to visit all the houses. So that's why the time complexity for this solution is going to be big O of n. Now, if you want to practice more questions like this, we have a dedicated page on prepinsta.com where you can find Accenture coding questions and solution for all the past year with the updated question. As you can see on this page, so basically with each question, you will get the explanation or the solution with the different programming language like C++, C, Java and Python. So this will help you out to practice more questions that are required to crack the Accenture interview. Plus, let's say if you want to learn about more things regarding the Accenture, so you can visit Prepinsta Prime where you will get all the contents in the video format. You can visit the dedicated section on the company specific track that we have. You can check Accenture. Here you will basically go through all the contents that are required for the different like verbal, logical that you have, then coding questions, pseudocode and post the test that you have. There will be interview round. In that thing, you will also get like what things you have to prepare. Okay, so you can, the link for these two pages are given in the description. You can check this link. Now, if you want to get the prep and stuff prime for free of cost, I have a question for you. So basically, if you solve this question, and we are going to pick the top three commenters and you can get a chance to win the Prime subscription for free of cost. So let me just help you with what is the question that we have and what you have to do it. So there's an automobile company which manufactures two wheelers and four wheelers as well. A company manager wants to make the production of both the type of vehicle according to the given data below. So what they have, the first data is the total number of vehicle is like combination of two wheeler and four wheeler, which is represented by the wheel. Then we have second data, which is a total number of wheels, which is represented by W. So what is your task here is the task to find how many two wheelers as well as four wheelers need to manufacture as per the given data. Let's have a look at the data and I'll also help you out with the sample input that we have. And you have to write the code for that and submit it in the comment section. So here are the constants that you need to follow based on like what kind of an input that you can give. So if I have to just summarize this in first line of input, we need to accept the value of V and in the second line of input, we need to accept the value of W. Let's have a look at the sample input. Let's say 200 is the value of V with the combination that we have like two wheeler plus four wheeler. Then 540 is the value of wheels that we have. Out of which the output that we have, number of two wheelers that you can make is 130 and number of four wheelers that you can make of 70. Okay, so if you combine this, so basically this will be total 200 vehicles and 30 plus 130 plus 70 that you get 200 vehicles. If you compare the number of uh, wheels, like 70, since this is a four wheeler, you will multiply by that 4 and 130 2 wheelers you will multiply by that 2 so this addition needs to be the exact number of wheels that is given so basically given the value of number of vehicles and number of wheels you need to tell like how many 2 wheelers can be manufactured and how many 4 wheelers can be manufactured that's the question that you have to solve. Let us know the answer in the comment section and you will get a chance to win the Prevenster Prime subscription. All right. So then here we have more than 30 plus companies who are hiring this placement season in order to get all the updated information. Make sure you follow us on LinkedIn, WhatsApp, Discord, LinkedIn and Telegram. All the links are given in the description of the video. That's it. And I will see you up ahead in the next one.